Hi everyone, I'm Professor Sally Eves. We're live here at MWC 23. It's been an amazing event so far. I'm here with Sal, Sal Viveros. What an amazing event. What a great event. I mean, they, yes. it's so great to be after the pandemic and there's over 85,000 people here. It's just bustling. It's amazing, isn't it? The energy, I think immersive is probably the best word to describe it so far. I think so many trends coming together as well. So around security in the networks, around sustainability. Also, I think the power of coming together is right up there too, isn't it? Oh, what have you found? Yeah, I, I mean, totally agree. I mean, I think the, the sustainability story I'm starting totally. to see everywhere. So it's it's so important. I'm so yes. glad that all the mobile operators, are, and everybody is really focused on that. But then, you know, just as importantly is security. You, Absolutely. You, these, these new devices are stronger than, you know, my original laptop. Okay. So they can do so much more, but people still don't realize it. They just consider it a mobile phone. So making sure that they're secure is critical. Absolutely. It's that embedding kind of by design, I think, that's so key, whether it's security or sustainability. You can't retrofit a lot of these things in. So that's what I love the focus. So from device level, from security, from the network up, from sustainability, I think it's a really interesting crossover that as well. So what are your customers kind of most experiencing from a security perspective to start with that? Because we've kind of got the three S's, haven't we, yeah. in terms of kind of scale, scope, sophistication of some of these threats. Yes. What are they asking you most about? And kind of how is that varying from organizations of different sizes? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think the, the challenge is, is we're seeing just a huge escalation in the number yes. of threats. I mean, you know, every year there's more and more threats. Uh, but the big challenge is uh, we just did a survey and um, what we found is 76% of the vulnerabilities that are being used at the moment yes. are over three years old. Wow. So people are not patching, they're not updating. Um, and that's critical because, mm -hmm. again, once, once the threat actors know about vulnerabilities, they can go out and try to exploit Absolutely. those. Um, and that's the big challenge is, you know, people need to update. Please update your systems, patch your systems, uh, that will help you stay protected. Totally agree with that. I think there was some other research that came out during COVID times about patching, actually. And it was saying a lot of organizations were delaying it up to five times before they did. And if you don't get that underpinning area right, it doesn't matter what you apply in terms of a more advanced tech, yeah. you, you're going to get those issues. And it's something like 98% of security threats can be addressed by some of this basic cyber hygiene. So there's a lot we can do. There's a lot of agency to make changes and then get that support too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's people just need to be a bit smart. Yes. Um, and, you know, there's there's thousands and thousands of vulnerabilities, but there's only a few of those that have been actually weaponized. So, so trying to understand which ones are weaponized, which ones are priority, and at least starting with those. And then, you know, if you can do that, you're minimizing the threat vector. Absolutely. Love that. And what I'd love to do now is look at some other themes and how they fit together. So I mentioned it a little bit about the power of the ecosystem. Again, yes. it's everywhere, isn't it? And the strength of partnership, again, the pandemic really showed that, didn't it? What we can do by coming together. Yeah. I'd love to drill into that. BT is right up there. Yes. I've been working with them with sustainability. And again, from the network up, which is really, really important. And I know really strong legacy of partnership, in fact, with Avanti, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, we actually uh, were uh, and talking about our, our new partnership. So uh, working with BT to provide technology to their small and medium-sized enterprise customers. Um, so they're actually going to be bundling our, our technology into their tariff, which is, which is great. And this is really important because most SMEs don't have the expertise, they don't have the skill set, they don't have the budget of a big enterprise. So they're actually left underprotected. And so by by working with BT, partnering with them to provide this to, you know, those SME customers, it's really going to help protect them. And again, you know, making sure that all the devices are protected, managed um, is critical. And it really is as well. I think sometimes it's underexplored, like how important the SME, SMB market is. Probably the biggest growth area. You're right, most exposed to some of these threats as well in terms of technical expertise or time or resource, etc. But equally, the gateway of entry to big enterprises as well. So there's a dual element of this. It works for everyone to support everyone, doesn't it? It really does. You see bad actors coming together. We need the good guys to do, don't we? Absolutely. Yeah, and, and these SMEs are critical parts of supply chains, Absolutely. right? So making sure that they're protected uh, so it doesn't you know, impact. But but another big reason mm -hmm. that, that we're so happy to partner with BT yes. is, is their stance on sustainability. Absolutely. You know, making sure that, that they're sustainable, that that's important. Um, again, a huge trend here at the at Global Congress, but really important for BT, which is, makes us very happy. So fantastic. I love the fact we've almost got three pillars coming together at the moment in terms of focus, haven't we? So we've got security, sustainability, and also we say inclusion. And actually, when you look at the data, they all mutually affect each other. So you know, communities that understand from a security protection point of view, equally most affected by sustainability challenges and least included too. So 
absolutely essential, really, to address these together. Yeah, no, and, and I think it's very important that, that we really, everybody, at the end of the day, everyone's a human. Yes. Uh, and having that diversity within your security teams gives you different perspectives. Some of the things, But really, also trying to make the security frictionless. And so building in the artificial intelligence, bringing in absolutely. the threat data feeds so that your security is enabled to really kind of go out and understand Absolutely. what are the threats, but then also prioritizing. Because again, making sure that you're taking care of the threats that are most likely to impact your organization. And again, building that intelligence into it is critical. It is. We need the active intelligence. We need to get ahead of these threats, don't we? So again, as you've got there behind us, it's really addressing the problems of sometimes you have a lack of visibility or a lack of integration. So many different data sources, and we need to bring them together in a more integrated, holistic way. So I love the fact you're supporting that across those different points too. Yeah, and, and I mean, I think the most critical thing is is the, the discovery. Yes. And most people don't think about that. Because again, you can't protect what you don't know about. Absolutely. And so being able to identify all of the mobile devices, the laptops, the computers, virtual reality headsets, all of these exactly. things are connected. So making sure that you can identify them, find them, and then you can actually do something about it. Because, you know, if you don't know about it, you can't protect it. Absolutely. It's all about that enablement, doesn't it? Definitely. And you mentioned there about application of AI and machine learning too. So I love that. Great example of, of tech integration again. But it's also a great point of that power of coming together by using that. You know, you're freeing up human people time at the end of the day. And we've seen a lot about, for example, operational kind of burnout yes. and so many threat noises and things. How do you filter through that to get to the the really granular of the nuggets of data that you can really use. So again, you're really supporting that. So kind of power of tech people partnership really, isn't it? It really is. And, and I mean, again, it's also, you know, that using the AI for, for automation. Yes. And, and again, you know, the, the security teams, there's so much burnout because they're having to do so many menial tasks that Absolutely. are just repetitive, uh, that are tiring, that aren't very exciting. So once you get start developing automation to take care of some of those things, it frees them up to do the more interesting Absolutely. things, to do the more research and to you know, try to understand what's going on Absolutely. with their environment. And, and those are the things they really want to be doing anyway. Exactly, a bit like your recent um, research around the threats that you shared yes. with the community too. And again, it's a great example of, of how to come together and share that knowledge. So as I said earlier, good guys come together, not just the bad ones. That's yes. the way to go, isn't it? It is the way to go. Absolutely. Well, Sal, I know we're running short of time. Fantastic to catch up today with all the latest news. MWC and Avanti, and again, sustainability, security and inclusion, probably our top three themes so far, and the power of coming together. Totally agree. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks. We'll come more coming soon. Thank you, Sal. And thank you all for watching and listening too.